the following chemical and energetics questions related to the standard enthalpy change of neutralization uh, so first I'm going to describe what standard enthalpy change of neutralization is the question says the table shows the enthalpy change of neutralization per mole of water formed delta H for various acids and bases so this enthalpy change of neutralization is defined as the energy released when one mole of water is produced when an acid and a base react so whenever an acid and a base react a salt is produced and water is produced so I'm going to write a couple of reactions so here are my examples uh, for example you have NaOH which is a base reacting with uh, HCl which is an acid and it produces salt plus it also produces one mole of water so the enthalpy change of this particular reaction would be called the enthalpy change of neutralization similarly I have another reaction in which I have KOH reacting with sulfuric acid so a base reacting with an acid and it's producing a salt and a water molecule and again one mole of water is being produced so the enthalpy change of both reactions is going to be called the enthalpy change of neutralization which is referred to as you write, a, write an N with the enthalpy change so it's the enthalpy change of neutralization now what's important is that whenever an acid and a uh, acid and a base react uh, the enthalpy change is always uh, going to be exactly the same it's always going to be uh, the enthalpy change would almost be equal to minus 57 kilojoules per mole and the reason why it's always going to be exactly the same is because uh, in an acid and a base reaction this sodium ions and these Cl ions are basically spectator ions. Similarly, in this other acid base reaction, this potassium ion and this sulfate ion are spectator ions. What's actually happening every time an acid and a base react is that an acid produces H plus 1 ions and a base is basically the source of OH minus 1 ions and when they react, they produce water. So, in each acid base reaction, uh, the rest of the ions are actually spectator ions they're not doing anything what's actually happening what's the what the iodic equation for the reaction is that the acid produces h plus one ions the base produces oh minus one ions and the reaction that happens is that in that h plus one reacts with oh minus one and it produces water so every time it's the same reaction that's happening hence the enthalpy change is always going to be exactly the same but there are a few exceptions and those exceptions are that if you have a weak acid so for weak acids the or bases so for weak acids and bases the problem is that they don't ionize fully so some energy is needed for ionization because they're not going to readily produce H plus 1 or OH minus 1 ions so for example you have uh, you have ethanoic acid which is given as an example over here as well so if you have ethanoic acid, ethanoic acid is not going to produce a lot of H plus 1 ions. So some energy would be needed to ionize ethanoic acid so it produces H plus 1 and OH minus 1 ions. So for weak acids and bases, some energy is needed for ionization. And this would make the reaction slightly more endothermic or less exothermic. So this enthalpy change, uh, which I gave as minus 57 kilojoules per mole, this enthalpy change is for strong acids and strong alkalis. So for weak acids, some energy is needed for neutralization, which would make this slightly uh, more endothermic. So this, uh, for weak acids and weak uh, bases, the enthalpy change would actually be slightly less than minus 57 kilojoules per mole because some of the energy would be used up for ionizing or producing H plus 1 and no H ions strong acids on the other hand they produce H plus 1 and no H ions readily now if you look at the options and if you look at the first option you have hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid is a strong acid similarly you have uh, sodium hydroxide which is a strong base so strong acid strong base the enthalpy change is given as minus 57 kilojoules per mole now if you look at uh, this uh, uh, other reaction, the acid is P and the base is uh, sodium hydroxide. Now this base is a strong base. So no energy would be needed to ionize it. It's going to ionize fully on its own. But the enthalpy change is given as minus 54 kilojoules per mole, which is less than minus 57. What that suggests is that this acid is going to be, it's going to be a weak, a weak acid. P is going to be a weak acid. 
because the reaction, the enthalpy change of the reaction is not actually minus 54, uh, minus 57 kilojoules per mole as it should be for strong acids and strong bases. It's actually lesser than minus 57. Hence, P must be a weak acid. Similarly, if you uh, look at the third option, hydrochloric acid reacting with Q and it's produced, and the enthalpy change that's given is minus 52 kilojoules per mole. So this this is a base over here. Now Q must be a weak base because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So since the enthalpy change is coming out to be less than um, minus 57, which means that uh, one of the acid or base must be a weak acid or base. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So this base over here would be a weak base. Now if we look at this uh, fourth option, the acid is nitric acid, which is a strong acid. Uh, the base is R. And the enthalpy change is minus 57 kilojoules per mole. Now the only way you can get minus 57 kilojoules per mole if, if your acid and base both are strong acids. So nitric acid is a strong acid. So this base over here, uh, which is R, must be a must be a strong base. Now the way you can figure out whether an acid is a strong or weak acid, generally organic acids are weak acids. So this uh, this weak acid over here, this P over here it must be it must be an organic acid similarly uh, bases uh, the bases that are weak bases they are generally nitrogen bases nitrogen bases are considered to be like ammonia or like any amines in organic chemistry nitrogen bases are considered to be weak bases so uh, i'm going to look at the options now and he's asking what are PQNR. So P was a weak acid, so it must be uh, an organic acid. So over here, I'm, I've, I'm given uh, two options for P, ethanoic acid or sulfuric acid. Now, sulfuric acid is a strong acid, so I'm going to cut that out. That can't be the correct option because uh, P is a weak, uh, it's a weak acid, weak, weak acid. So ethanoic acid would be the correct option. Q, on the other hand, is a weak base. It's, it must be a nitrogen base. So I'm going to cut out uh, sodium hydroxide because sodium hydroxide is, a, is one of the strongest bases. So ammonia would be the correct option. And if you look at R, R is a strong base. So a uh, strong base, generally group 1 oxides and hydroxides are very strong bases. So I'm going to cut out ammonia for R because, uh, because ammonia is actually a weak base. And... Uh, if you look at the options now, the only option that fits the above description is going to be option A. That P is a weak acid, Q is a weak base, and R is a strong, strong uh, base. Hence, option A is going to be the correct option for this question.